Yeah, immunotherapy is really the, the new and exciting development in oncology, and melanoma was always the pacemaker. And this is both true for ipilimumab, this is true for NTPD1, antibody therapy, and now for the first time uh, the combination of two checkpoint inhibitor antibodies is investigated in a prospective randomized trial, and these data were presented. And for me, this presentation was the highlight of this year ASCO meeting. It was a large prospective randomized trial. 945 uh, patients were included and distributed in, the, in a random blinded way on three arms. Ip, uh, ipilimumab monotherapy, nivolumab monotherapy, and the combination of the two. I think this was a, a great study. What do you think, Chris, Christoph? The study design, is this adequate? The design, I think, was absolutely perfect. Yeah, it addressed the, or it addressed one of the most relevant questions, I think, in the immunotherapy of melanoma in the moment. Um, it was clearly only powered to compare the standard of care, ipilimumab, with either nivolumab or the combination. So it might be difficult to draw some comparisons. Yeah, I think this is a very, arms, yeah. very important point, what Christoph is mentioning. From the design, this study will only help us to say what is the best first-line treatment, ipilimumab or one of the other ones. The, the number of patients are not enough to compare the long-term outcome of the combination Nivo plus IP versus Nivo alone. Mm -hmm. So this has to be, this is one point that has to be investigated in the future. Uh, so, what were the outcomes? Uh, we saw we had a response rate for 43% for, uh, for nivolumab, 57% uh, for the combination versus 19% for IPI. So, this is a clear advantage of the new treatment approaches versus our standard therapy, ipilimumab. And this uh, advantage was also reflected by the increased PFS. It was 6.9 for. Uh, uh, nivolumab versus 11.5 for the combination versus 2.9 for ipilimumab. So this is uh, a clear uh, result from my point of view. So Christoph, monotherapy IP in first line, is this the way to go? Not anymore, I think. I think the moment that these drugs are available, we will immediately switch to either one of the new um, treatments either nivolumab alone or the combination. I personally would favor the combination for many patients because I think if we also look at the response rates, they have been clearly better than with the monotherapy. But do you want to um, comment on the toxicity of the exactly combination Exactly, that's the point. To the exactly, other ones? Exactly, I think that's a very important point and I think this will be a point that will in the future, maybe for many patients, make the decision which treatment we will use, because the difference clearly is that we know also from a pooled data set that was also presented at this meeting that with nivolumab, only 3% of patients will stop treatment due to side effects. And with the combination treatment, it's above 30% of patients who will uh, have to stop treatment. Although one has to say that a significant part of the patients who stop treatment because of toxicity will still have a response, which I think is also a very important point that we have to consider. But, you know, we always have patients where we are just concerned that if they will have major side effects that maybe we will not do the best for them what, that we can. So I think in these cases, uh, monotherapy with nimolumab with the low rate of grade three side effects of around 10% is then clearly a great alternative. Yeah, yeah, I think we have to always, we have to keep in mind the quality of life aspects and this is difficult to estimate. However, if we really look at the rate of severe adverse events, there's, there's quite a difference. So EP alone had uh, grade three, four and uh, three and four, 27%, whereas 16% for, for anti-PD-1, nivolumab, versus 55%. So if we look at the, uh, at the positive side, so nivolumab seems to be really well tolerated. Huh? It, it absolutely is, I think, and I think every one of us who has already used these PD-1 antibodies would agree 
that the number of patients that where we really have to take care of side effects in comparison to IPI is is really very small, and, and it's an easy to use drug actually. Yeah. So, what is your, for you the most concerning <coughs> adverse event uh, during uh, monotherapy with nivolumab? The most concerning or the most frequently observed side effect, although it was not that concerning, honestly, were elevated pancreatic enzyme levels. So that's what we have hands-on seen most frequently. Um, also fatigue, which in all studies has been shown to be the most frequent side effect of the PD-1 antibodies. Honestly, um, I have yet to see in one of our patients a real concerning side effects because all of these side effects were absolutely well manageable within the established treatment guidelines. Yeah. Uh, so I fully agree and, and maybe we should add that the patient should be monitored for thyroid function because this is sometimes an issue and it's not it's difficult to, to hand uh, it's not difficult to handle but you have mm -hmm. to check for this. Uh, we are actually really searching for biomarkers for immunotherapy and uh, one a stratification factor in this study was the expression of PD ligand 1 and uh, doing uh, uh, investigations on of the role of this factor there was an interesting uh, slide on the presentation that showed that the progression free survival in the PD ligand 1 positive population was more or less identical to the progression free survival of of the combo so does this mean that we do not need uh, ipilimumab in uh, this population? Is this a conclusion that you would, would draw? Um, I would say it's certainly something that should be looked into more in more detail. Um, in the moment the data presented, I would not really follow that immediately. Yeah. Um, the point is that the median time of follow-up is around nine months. So for some patients, it's still relatively short. We have a lot of sensitive patients in that curve. The second issue for me is that we have made the experience with the checkpoint inhibitors that PFS and OS are not always the same story. So I think to before I would ask a final verdict on this, um, I would probably like to see the overall survival curves, honestly. Yeah, but, but still I think it's encouraging because this is what we are more or less uh, looking for. We, we want to do precision medicine also f uh, using immunotherapy and I think this could be one of the, of, on, of the markers that, that is powerful. But I fully agree with you, the, the, the final uh, uh, relevance of this factor is still open. There was another study presented. Uh, uh, a phase two study that compared the combination versus EP monotherapy? Yes, there was the O69 study presented by Steve Hody, and which was actually first time presented some weeks ago at the ACR. Um, and it has a little bit of a longer observation period. Clearly, there's no nivolumab monotherapy arm in there. Um, I think it pretty well sh recapitulated what we've seen in the phase three study. Um, it was a little bit more a positively selected patient group, which I think is not uninteresting because we tend to use immunotherapy in the clinic, I think mostly in patients who are a little bit better off. So maybe the 69 study even has a population that in the moment we are used to treat with immunotherapy. And I think what's What's very impressive about the data from the 069 study is that they had 22% with a complete remission, which I think is a new high. And if we say compare that to 20% long-term responders with PRs and stable diseases with IPI, and suddenly we have the same number of complete remissions, I mean, that's absolutely a new standard for yeah. me. Yeah? This is a good so, statement because it shows how fast we are moving and the CR question, the complete remission, this is really essential. Patient, finally, we want to cure patients with advanced disease and the CR is the, the key step to, to achieve this. Yeah. So in this context, there were also some data on target therapy, 
Georgina Long presented an update on the combination dabrofenitramitinib versus dabrofenib, mm -hmm. uh, and there was a presentation on the on the Roche study, Cobrim, which investigated cobimetinib plus vimorafenib in comparison to the monotherapy with vimorafenib. Do you think that we still need these treatments? Oh, absolutely. I think it's great to have also this really good therapies in our armamentarium. Um, clearly with the new therapies now coming in, we will again start the discussion when to use which therapy. I think it will be very interesting um, where we will in the future set the border of a patient that has a higher tumor mass and maybe a little bit of faster progression and where we will in the near future decide to even in these patients where in the until now we tended to go through to the kinase inhibitors first, we will in the future still use one of the new immunotherapies. So I think that's very interesting, but, but honestly 25 months median overall survival for the combo arm in the COMBI-D study I think is also a very impressive result that yeah, this uh, is we have to consider in, if we make a therapeutic decision. Yeah. yeah. You are um, right. This is really exciting. If you see, if you see the landmark data for the survival with uh, between 70 and 80 percent for immunotherapy <coughs> and also 73 percent for for dabrafenib, uh, trametinib combination, uh, on the first glance this looks very identical. And the big question is the question about the tail. So what Absolutely. will happen to these curves? And we have to admit that the the, the observation time has to be. Prolonged for both for, treatment for the kinase inhibitors as well as for the nivolumab studies. But I think we've also seen a very interesting abstract that maybe um, is, could be a little bit an outlook into the future. You know, Tony Rebus presented the data from a phase one study where a PDL1 antibody was combined with a BRAF inhibitor and a MEK inhibitor. And I think for me, the major take home question or, or, or the major uh, point uh, from that study was that actually this triple combination can be used safely. Okay. 